Malaysia truly Asia. You've all seen the ads on endless repeat on possibly every cable network. But aside from the typical montage shown to you, you had no idea what Malaysia was about. Well, I didn't. It's not really a destination that pops up in people's bucket lists, usually trailing well behind other Southeast Asian countries. The first time I went to Kuala Lumpur, I didn't expect anything. I was flying overnight, as one does, for work, a quick conference in a hotel, a night out, a meal, and that was it. Going to the airport to catch my red eye, it hit me. Damn, this infrastructure is impressive. I was surrounded by tall buildings and amazing highways. Who knew Malaysia was doing so well economically? That's when it hit me. I should have stayed longer. KL is like Singapore, but on steroids. Bigger, brasher, definitely more Asian, without all the foreign bankers and recruitment officers. If you're looking for the most ethnically diverse city in Asia, this is it. For this overnight, we are at the convergence of two rivers and where Asia really gets together. We are in Kuala Lumpur. This is a city where everyone kind of cohabitates peacefully, seamlessly, and really creates a diverse and budgeting culture. You will land at the KL International Airport, which isn't too far from the city, but the traffic can get pretty bad at times, so it will usually take you about 45 minutes to an hour and will set you back about 25 US dollars. Alternatively, you can take the KLIA Express train, which only takes 30 minutes and only costs about $7. A great option if you're staying at the center of the city. So when you find yourself at the KL airport, there are only maybe about three options presented to you, bus, taxi, or train. Right now we're on the express train, which takes about 30 minutes to get to the central station. Now this is only a good idea if your hotel is not too far from the central station, since you still need to take a taxi after this. If you're more than three people, you're probably better off taking a taxi, it'll be a cheaper option. So we're currently on our way to our hotel, so I used um, Airbnb to kind of book my trip. Pretty cool place, we're staying in a massive apartment that has a view on the Twin Towers, which is pretty cool. Sabri and Wati are our hosts and they're waiting for us, so they're texting me right now and letting me know that we're not too far from them. And we're staying in a very central area of Kuala Lumpur, which is a great thing, so at least you have access to everything. We decided to stay in Bukit Bintang area since this was the most central with all the malls and shops around us. However, if you want to stay somewhere a little more hip and quiet, I would suggest the Bangsar area. So we are here in Street Patali, which is basically like a small community center. So this is the areas where you can find a lot of the best restaurants. This is really where the locals come to eat. Now I met a girl called Joyce uh, who has a very famous blog here in KL and she told me people here are addicted to what they call chili pan mi. So that's what we're gonna try right now. The restaurant's called Restaurant Super Kitchen and I'm so excited to give it a try. Food in Malaysia is so confusing. Most people in KL couldn't tell me what was their favorite type of cuisine. It's just that there's so many influences and options that it makes it difficult to choose. You're on the right track if you stick to staples and leave some room for surprises. You could go to lot 10 to try a lot of Malaysian dishes under one roof. Sun Fong for some baku tea, the restaurant Yan Gun for Hokkien Mi, Wong Ki for some roast pork, Mali's Corner or Nasi Lemak Tangling for that beautiful topped rice, sambal, and fried chicken. So this place came highly recommended um, by a local and, and they said that it was just really, really addictive, especially this one, which is the chili pan mi, basically some kind of pork that's ground, a whole egg they can break into and just kind of spread all over, some garlic, some chili with some noodles. And you kind of just mix everything together. I haven't eaten anything since seven in the morning, so I'm absolutely famished. I can feel like my skin like tightening around my face, so I'm really excited about this first meal. And in true overnight style, we have four other kinds of dishes in front of us because we pigs like that and we just like to eat as much as we can. Let me give this a try. It's really good. It's like fried pieces of meat mixed with chili. It's intense, it's flavorful. That egg really just plays into it nicely. Yum. I also have a curry pan mi, which is basically the same thing, but just with a curry sauce, some tofu, and some pork. That's a solid broth. And then I have a pork 
meat. Again, with some soy this time. Look at that color. That is absolutely amazing. Let me give that a try. Heaven. This is such a solid first meal in kale. And then here we have some sort of pork, ground pork, and cut up. It's like little spring rolls. Minced meat, minced pork, some carrots. Slightly fermented too. Not as greasy as it looked. I thought it was gonna be really like heavy, but it's actually quite light, nice. So Kuala Lumpur has probably one of the most thriving coffee cafe scenes in Asia. A lot of coffee shops opening, but also just a lot of the standard cafes with just good continental food. Places where people kind of just hang out and get together and get to know each other. It's a great place to kind of figure out where to do things. I was shocked by the amount of coffee shops in the city. Depending on where you were staying, there's bound to be a truckload of choices. A few of them are Frika, Dr. Inc., VCR, LOKL or Grey Sky Morning. I always enjoy finding these places kind of in the middle of nowhere that just gives you a nice respite from the constant beating of a city and how chaotic and crazy a new city can go. You come to coffee shops like this, it kind of just slows everything down and the people you kind of meet inside, for me, what are the greatest resources? Because that way you get to understand how they live their lives and where they like to hang out at night, where they like to go, and maybe some secret places that they don't usually tell people about. We're looking for some roti chennai, we're absolutely lost. Google Maps usually is my saving grace, but today brought us to the wrong area. The things we do for food. Kale has a strong Indian community and the cultures have merged completely, which is why we're trying to look for roti chennai. Unfortunately, we got lost and we didn't find it. However, we were told that night the best places to go were Lan Roti, Valentine Roti, and Mansion Tea Stall. Don't worry, we'll put all the addresses down below. So we decided to go for the next best thing, banana leaf meals with our hands. In Kuala Lumpur, there are quite a bit of restaurants that are famous for banana leaf meals. One of the ones that came recommended highly from a lot of people was Debbie's. So it's found in this really cool, hip part of town where there's a lot of little boutiques, a lot of shops, a lot of coffee shops. So this is our first stop here. We're really hungry, so we want to get some roti. We want to eat it with our hands with some nice rice, some sort of curry. The spices smell amazing. We're really ready for this. We sat there confused for quite a while, not knowing what to order. People were bustling around and bringing things to other tables, but we weren't being served. Eventually, the cooks came up to us and just started putting food on our leaves. From chutneys to chilies to mutton and heaps of rice, just sit back and enjoy the ride. If you want to get away from all the shopping malls, the Bangsar district, which we're in right now, is an absolutely awesome choice because there's lots of things to do. Sifu Reflexology is probably one of the best massages in town for your feet. Also, there's a bunch of nice restaurants and small boutiques for shopping. It gives you that alternative vibe you might not get from deep downtown Kale. The most iconic place, the Twin Tower and the Kale Tower. And uh, I think these two places can make it one day. Most of the time I'll be in uh, Scott's Garden, yeah, because uh, that area, I mean, if you go for drinks like beer, it's, it's more cheaper. Okay, if you are talking about experience, right, you, you should take a look at the uh, culture. Actually, Malaysia, as you know, we are three races in, in, in this country, right? So you, you should take a, a look at the Chinese, Malay and the Indians. Okay, so actually you can go to Chinatown, but nowadays Chinatown is not much of China. <laughs> Chinese already. Yeah, that is like a foreign, uh, like Bangladeshi or Myanmar, a lot uh, there. But you can take a look at uh, the uh, historical area in, in, in uh, Chinatown, and uh, you can go to the Little India at uh, Central. And Malay, uh, I think everyone is Malay because he is Malaysia, right? You put away the politics, we are in one big family. You have no idea in other countries, they have only one nation and one type of people. They won't know what are their other culture looks like. So that's why other countries people will come to Malaysia and feel how we three big races can be together for so many years, you see. It's, it's about like uh, give and take and, and respect on, on each culture, you see. But we enjoy, seriously we enjoy because I've been to China, I've been to Korea, Taiwan, but you can see the food is, is very original, like uh, Chinese food is Chinese food. But in Malaysia, Chinese food can like mix match with those uh, uh, Malay food and uh, like 
uh, Nyonya food. Yeah. It's Chinese mixed with Malay, you see. So they, they can't really experience on this in their country, but we in Malaysia, yes, we do. And we love it so much. So if you want to see most of the historical sites in one day, it's actually quite easy. It's at the center of everything. You can start at the Dataran Merdeka and from there see all the different mosques, the different Hindu uh, worship temples, and the old seats of government, the old justice court. It's all at the same space. You can just basically walk around it and see everything in one go. If you want to see the sites, just go around the Dataran Merdeka, Chinatown, Sinsji Siya Temple, if that's how you say it, Tian Hu Temple, the Central Market, and the Masjid Jamek, basically the Central Mosque. If you want to go shopping, there are two places I would recommend, the Pavilion for anything high-end and Publica for a hipper, younger vibe. So we've uh, overstayed our welcome in a cocktail bar a while ago and we drank quite a bit, so we showered. Um, and we're ready to kind of go out. A little bit tired, but I think if we get a little bit of food into us, we should be all right. So we're heading to Jalan Alor, which is a really cool, not a market, but it's just more where people kind of come together to eat at night and lots of stalls and stuff like that. So most of the great hawker food that you can find in Kuala Lumpur, you can find it there at night. And it's just a great vibe and lots of energy. So I'm really excited about that. Then we're gonna head out to a couple more cocktail bars, maybe a nice restaurant. And then we're gonna hit up a club called Nagaba. We got invited to this really cool event. Check it out, see how it goes. For a country that doesn't like promoting drinking and pork eating, there's sure a lot of pork eating and drinking happening. Some of my favorite bars are Hidden Misses for dinner and drinks, Bar Lai and Omakase Appreciate for a chill underground vibe, Mr. Brooks and Tate's for a more masculine design. Though the cocktail scene is still nascent, it's slowly being developed. So this is still Asian after all. Traffic is really bad, wasn't moving. We're running out of time, you know, we're on a, on a really tight schedule, so we decided to walk. Things are not too far from each other, so hopefully we get there in time. Basically, Bukit Bintang, it's the center of everything. This is really when you feel that KL is that huge cosmopolitan hub. It's chaotic, lots of cultures kind of clashing but coming together seamlessly. A lot of people, lots of different vendors, lots of different shops and restaurants. Yes, it may seem like a lot, maybe overwhelming, but it is the best place to stay in if you kind of have that short, limited amount of time to see the whole city. So if you're looking for a place to come at night, we're here at the crossover of two different districts. So you have Changkit, uh, Bukit Bintang right here, which is known to be a bar street, lots of bars, lots of activities at night. And then we have Jalan Alor, which basically has a lot of food stalls where you can get your late night eats. I think it's the perfect kind of symbiotic relationship where you have drinking, food, all night long. So this street gets a little intense. There's a little bit of everything, just like Kuala Lumpur itself a huge mixture of cultures. So you've got some Indonesian food, some Chinese food, some Singaporean food, you've got some Malaysian food, some Indian food, just some, everything kind of just served here. And it's a little overwhelming, but you should come with a mission statement unless you're ready to eat absolutely everything and just stuff your face. So what I love about these places is you're never really sure who actually works here, so you're kind of looking at people with aprons. It's kind of chaotic, but they seem to manage the chaos really well. There's a lot of people here trying to get food. People are ordering a lot, but service seems to be coming out. Now, in Jalan Lord, there's a couple of things that you want to look out for. I was actually looking for roti chanai, but the thing is roti is usually made until midday. So we're going to settle for some really great satay, some chicken wings. I got some skate or some um, stingray, and then we also got some squid with some nice salted eggs. So very typical kind of Malaysian feast coming up our way. It's a nice beer, obviously, to wash it all down, and I'm super excited for this meal. Cheers. This is my favorite. If you've had your fill of street food and all that spice, you can always try Wonderama for a modern take on Malaysian food. Places like Charcoal, Acme South for some well-made American dishes, or Sitka and Bijan for more traditional fare in a nice cold setting. Regardless, there are always a lot of exciting concepts being developed, and Malaysian people love their food, so you're never far from a good meal. After heaven, walked so long and eaten all that street food, you're really sweaty, you're really tired. I just want a good drink or two before we start hitting the different clubs and seeing what else the city has to offer at night. 
There are quite a lot of clubbing options in KL, from the huge, just newly opened Zook, to the more conceptual Pisco Bar, Rabbit Hole, or Play at the Roof, or even a great jazz bar like No Black Tie with amazing acoustics. You will always find something to do. We met up with our friend Joyce, and after interviewing her, she brought us to a multi-story club restaurant concept called Nagaba, which is perfect to end our night. Chili pan mi. <laughs> or um, besides that, well, it depends where I will be. There, there are some like really great beef ball noodles that is near Pataling Street, and there's like a great crackling pork place which is in Pudu. We're going there tomorrow. Oh, cool! Yeah, you're gonna love that. Okay. Yeah. I think because there are so many different cultures and races of people here, and we've all pretty much grown up with each other since school, and now everyone's like procreating. You've got like mixed blood everywhere, and everyone speaks more than four dialects at a time and we even like make up our own slang by co-joining different words from other dialects together. So I think that's really cool. Like I miss speaking in my slang when I go overseas to travel. Yeah. It makes me proud to be part of a community of Malaysians who take pride in their work and the way they live their lives, the way they treat other people and the way they treat themselves. Sometimes on weekends um, I'll take an hour's drive out of KL into Suremban and there's like a valley with um, virgin rainforest with a, quite a few guest houses there which are beautiful. So you wake up and it's like open air and the first thing you see are just trees. And they have like infinity pools and barbecue pits. That's amazing. Um, besides KL, I would totally recommend going up to Penang to eat as well. <laughs> There's a lot of food there. Definitely in the rainforest. I really want to go do more hiking in that area. And there are amazing caves as well. My current favorite dinner restaurant I think I'm going to say this place called Okatsu in Plaza Damas. It's this really tiny cafe-like ja Japanese place that looks really legit. It's just really small, very simple, but they fly in their own seafood fresh. They have like this amazing mantaiko rice and you can pick like all whatever fish that is fresh for the day and they grill it for you and it's not pricey at all. It's, it's amazing and they even make their own ice cream. <laughs> oh, I love Hyde in Damansara Uptown. It's beautiful, it's got like floor-to-ceiling mirrors, leather couches, a beautiful marble bar dehydrated fruit for you to take, different colours and assortments and delicious cocktails. People keep on coming back yeah. and like I've got expert friends who've stayed here for seven years and they're still here. <laughs> okay, but say um like for holiday, I don't know. I think I think a week is, is a week is enough, just like any other city. Yeah. Do a week, I would say Okay, but this is just coming from me. Like I would I would try to like not do all the touristy stuff and just live like a normal KL overnight. I mean, I can think of so many other places in the world which I feel very connected with. Like, I love Bali, I love San Francisco, I love Seoul, I love... You know, I have all these plans, like I want to move and stay in these places. But I keep on finding myself doing business here and still coming back because it's the people here. Like, I actually miss the people here. If you do have the time, I do recommend coming to the Batu Caves. It's a series of shrines and temples from the Hindu religion that's basically built into a limestone cliff. It's very impressive to see and it's kind of cool. It makes really cool pictures as well. So if you have one place to kind of select in terms of a place of interest to visit, I'd probably go for this one. It's only about 20 to 30 minutes out of the city, close to 13 kilometers. So it's not a bad drive and it's a lot of great things to see. And on a Sunday, not a lot of people. If climbing stairs isn't your thing, check out what's playing at the KL Performance Arts Theater. They usually have some really diverse shows on. So we're in uh, Sambal Hijau, is that correct? Sambal Hijau. So obviously we're the only foreigners here, so Joey brought us out here. It's kind of far from... Oops. Well, he's totally local. And Joyce brought us out here, so it's about 20 minutes away from Kale. Place, very local, lots of choices of food. You kind of just choose what you want and put it together. And I'm really hungry, so I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to eat because I deserve it. Malaysia is, well, truly Asia. A place where people are so kind that they go out of their way to show you their city and give you recommendations on how best to entertain yourself and have a great time. Each conversation I had ended up with someone telling me to go try another Malaysian city to experience even more diversity. The people here are truly in love and proud of their heritage and that for me should take precedence over all the bad press the country has gone through recently. Come with an open mind and no expectations and find a thriving city that has lots to offer and that actually acts as a gateway to a country that beckons to be discovered. 
Tune in to our next episode. The quirky and lovely chef JP Anglo is back and we head on to Bangkok to once again fill our stomachs and smack ourselves senseless with Thai culture. Make sure to check out our Saigon and Taipei episodes right here and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat for updates and behind the scenes pictures and videos. We would like to thank Access Travel and Tours for making this trip possible and organizing all our logistics for us. Check out their site for more information. So Overnight Kuala Lumpur was brought to you by our good friends at Cebu Pacific and here's a quick travel hack for you. Use your smartphone, take pictures of your passport, boarding pass, of your luggage tag, of your hotel or Airbnb address, all of that just to make sure that you have all that information stored on your smartphone and even if you don't have data when you land, you can still access it.